We've seen technology transitions through the ages, from horses to steam engines to internal combustion engines and now to electric motors. And it's a natural evolution of, uh, of the species of mobility. I definitely think the world needs EVs and definitely looks like this is the way uh, we are moving forward. We have an issue with the, the CO2 and one of the key drivers of that is, is obviously um, the motor car. The world is urbanizing, so keeping clean air, we've seen it actually you know, dramatically in this period over the last three months with COVID-19 pandemic. Factories can see the clean air now and that's what EVs can, can bring. I think there is overall consensus now that the best way to clean up mobility uh, and help climate change is to do uh, two things, to uh, accelerate the mass adoption of electric cars, but in conjunction with, of course, acceleration of the deployment of renewable energy as well. We need to make sure that the entire chain, of course, is, uh, is, is sustainable. It can't just be down to the vehicle. It needs to be down to the way that the energy is then is sourced and produced. But I think if you put those things in place, then we can make a huge step in the right direction. Well, and the holy grail is all cars electric, powered by 100% renewable energy, and you know, that's what we need to get to as soon as possible. I think motorsport has always been seen as a test bed for, for, for technologies. The beauty of motorsport is that the sheer competitiveness between the teams allow for a much faster technology development than you'd see in a normal road. If you go back to the famous examples of uh, rearview mirror, um, anti-lock brakes, traction control, all these great inventions were born on the track and then were adopted by, uh, by uh, mass uh, transportation. And with this acceleration of technology development done at the racetrack, that will lead to a much better product for the, for the masses, for, for commercial products later on. It used to take about 10 years for an innovation to appear on the track and then to make its way to mainstream vehicles. What I think is exciting about Formula E is that I think this time scale is going to be reduced dramatically. Uh, you will see uh, innovations that we are uh, putting on the track now these technologies will be on the road in like three years time. Technology we are developing, the, the software, uh, is something that uh, you know, will ultimately be translated into, into the normal road cars. When you'd started, if you asked some of the manufacturers, was there much to learn about electric motor technology? They probably would have said, you know, electric motors have been around for 100 years. They're in air conditioners, fridges, everything. And I think we've all learned a lot. There's a secondary role as well, and this is where I think Formula E as a series uh, does it very well. Um, we're actually bringing uh, a very clear message in terms of the viability of electric vehicles to the target groups that are really in the best place to actually purchase and use those electric vehicles. So we're racing in city centres and some of the most iconic cities in the world. So that messaging that we're, that we're bringing with us, I think, is getting to the right people and hopefully that will start to support the switch over to, uh, to electric vehicle technology. My experience with electric vehicles goes back quite a long way. Well, my first experience with EV technology, I was probably three or four years old and I got my small electric car. First time you drive a fast electric car, the, the sensation is amazing, you know, the, the, the relentless push is super, uh, super addictive, but also how smooth it is, you know. They're not milk floats anymore, they're actually fast, they're high performing cars, they're fun to drive, they're interesting. Get in there, feel the torque, the instant torque that you've got there is, is, is something completely different to when you're driving a, a combustion engine vehicle. I drove an R8 from Audi in 2012 and I drove a Tesla in 2011. And for me, that opened completely my mind and changed my perception about electric cars. I'm, I'm driving a Mercedes-Benz EQC um, and I love it. I love the, the it's a very different feeling. Uh, the instant torque that you've got um, is fun and exciting to drive as well. So, so I'm a huge fan. And the basic thing with an electric car is that the torque from zero kilometers an hour, that's the most impressive thing because that's just what an electric motor is really good at. So you can do some pretty amazing things with, it, with electric motors and it's one of the most fascinating bits about motorsport technology I find is what you can do that you can't do with a petrol engine. I switched from a, from a petrol head to an electric head when I drove uh, one of the very early Tesla Roadsters when Tesla brought their first car in England and um, I was blown away by the performance. At the time that car was very fast, could only do a few laps and then it would overheat. But I got a glimpse of the potential. The sheer difference of experience when you're driving a car, it's more silence, better response. If you charge at your house, you never have to stop at a gas station again. And on top of it, you know that you're doing something good for the environment and for people around you. It, it, it's only a benefit for, for the whole society and for the individual. I think that EV technology has, has 
picked up pace dramatically over, over the past few years. Um, and I think that the, the understanding and the acceptance, there's, the, you know, there's a few pain points that we always talk about, such as range anxiety and things like that. I think that that's becoming less and less of an issue as people really get a feel for what is possible with EVs. And I'm hopeful that actually we'll see now over the next few years, a really significant jump and a change in, in consumer habits and a switch over to, to EVs. And I think, as I said right at the beginning, if we do that, then we can really make a significant difference in, in reducing the carbon footprint that, that we have as, as, as vehicle users. Well, it's hard to pinpoint to the exact year, but I think predictions are much easier to make now than they were five to ten years ago. I think now it's very clear. Any, any large um, metropolitan area and suburb will, will go on electric sooner than later. That's a very hard question. Every time somebody tries to predict the future, they got it wrong. I mean, uh, I do a lot of work on this uh, subject, so I've got some uh, interesting views, let's say. Uh, the tendency for the short term is more electric mobility, less cars on the streets, electric cars. Autonomous driving and so on and so forth will, will take a huge step forward again. If you look at the, the research and development projects that are happening at the moment and, and the push in that direction, um, I think that that's going to be huge. Car manufacturers are already almost at the tipping point where an electric car will be cheaper to make than the equivalent petrol car. The cost of making an, an internal combustion engine is going up with the extra filters needed and so on, when the cost of making an electric car is decreasing very rapidly. So as soon as the cars are cheaper to make, comparing apples and apples, than the petrol car, it's game over. That's the, these are the cars they'll be making. Micromobility will play a big part. Electric bicycles, electric scooters, and this type of, of mobility. The future looks not the best for cars as we know it, but much cheaper and cleaner and better quality of life for the majority of society uh, in, the, in the medium term. When we started Formula E, so six, seven years ago, I was quoted by saying, in 25 years time, so that's 18 years from now, we'll look back at internal combustion the same way we look at steam trains now. So it's a bit you know, bold, but I actually don't think it's far off. You know, in 10, 15 years time, you'll see a car with smoke uh, at the back of the, uh, the exhaust and you'll be like, this is not okay, this shouldn't be allowed. Mass transit is still super important, so you still have to have undergrounds. That's what's great about places like London, obviously. Uh, we will have obviously electric vehicles, there'll be electric buses, there'll be anything that puts more people per hour down a street. I think in five years time you will suddenly see electric cars really everywhere. Uh, they will have not taken over the, the park of cars overall, of course, because it takes time for the current cars to, uh, to make their way out. But in five years time, electric cars will be everywhere and you won't be surprised by them at all. And all the major manufacturers will have a full range from city car to high performance sports cars. I think we need to keep an open mind. Um, we need to adapt. Um, and as a business, as an organisation, that's exactly what we're doing now. So we're building that flexibility to, and that adaptability to make sure that we can accept the change.